would be kind of funny if we just stood here for a minute, wouldn't it? <laughs> Everybody on the video going, what's going on with my TV? <laughs> good morning. Good morning. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Oh, we're so glad to have you with us. We are at the gathering at Christ of the Hills United Methodist Church. Welcome. I am Pastor Stephen Fries. We welcome you uh, to this Palm Sunday, uh, beginning of Holy Week. And so we are just excited to be a part of it. Uh, the only announcement that I really have for you is that today at 3 o'clock will be the, the Easter, almost said Christmas, the Easter cantata, okay? You want to hear some good choir music, you've got to be here by 2.30 if you want a seat that you would like to be sitting in, okay? Because at a quarter till, you're going to get whatever we have. Pretty much that's the way, that, the way it goes, all right? We expect a very, very large crowd, um, and so we would really love, uh, really love to be a part of There are so many people. I love this. There's so many people not sitting in their usual spot. It is about to just, just do me in. I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, it's all right. It's all right. Okay. But that's, that's what we have, all right? We're going to do just something a little different uh, today. Um, when we get down to uh, our time of prayer, and you see the Lord's Prayer, we're going to recite that, not sing it, okay? We're going to do that for a little while, just a little change of pace, okay? It's going to do that. But uh, you have a celebration, and where is Steve? You have a celebration this morning? Yes, I've been called back into active ministry, and on May 1st, I want to be the new pastor of the Northern Methodist Church of Norman, Arkansas. All right, praise be to God. Yes, praise be to God. Yes, huh? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's that's the uh, because that's my first my my first question is where did they send you? And my second question is are you going to move? And I, yeah, that was answered. So that was that's good. All right, cool. And if you that's said good. you were moving, we weren't going to clap. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody else have a celebration, Joy? Yes, Joanne. All right, we're glad to have you all with us. Yes, yes. Any kind of celebration. We've got a bunch of visitors. I wasn't going to just stand them out or anything like that, but, it, you know, but, but, you know. I was, I was at a Baptist church one time where they, I signed the guest card, and they brought it all the way up to the pastor, and he announced and everything. I'm like, no, my goodness, I didn't, didn't feel right. didn't feel right. But here's the one thing that for brand new visitors, I would love for you to have the feeling that you have just walked in to a family reunion, okay? Because here's the thing. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then that's what you are. We're blood brothers and sisters, that's right. okay, of the blood of Christ. And so that's, that's where, oh, yeah, come on in, come on in. Oh, goodness, glad to have you all with us. Hi, Miss Vicki. Thank you. All right, glad to have you all with us. You are the two youngest people that we've ever had in this church. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know how I know this is because every grandparent, we're like bird dog on quail. They all pointed at you. <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was great. It was great. But we're so glad. To, we're doing celebrations right now. Uh, and anybody has a joy? Uh, yes. Uh huh. Oh yeah. COVID. Yeah, the COVID. Yeah. Yes, yes. All right. Pretty, you know, give God some praise on that. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, Ron. Yes. Amen. Yes. All right. Yes, praise be to God. All right. Just looking around, see if you got any other 
other great joys? Okay. Um, we do have a few new f- folks here, all right? Uh, and the offering that we're going to pass around uh, is going to be going around here in just a moment. If you place a, a, any dollars, $1 bills in that, that goes directly to our mission giving uh, that they designate. Uh, it's a dollar a week giving. Um, it was started many, many years ago. Um, and so those dollars go toward the mission team. The mission team goes through local areas. All right, and we are really, really close to being at giving out somewhere around the half a million dollar mark uh, since that started. Um, and so, if if you see a lot of people put in one dollar bills, and that's the reason for that, they 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 give that. But giving to the church, giving as an offering, is what you're saying is this is, and and it is exactly this. It is worship. Right. You are worshiping our God with not only our voices, our our prayers our presence, but also with our gifts. And so let us do that now. In our prayer time this morning, there's going to be um, a, a list of names that are going to come out in the weekly ringer in the next couple of weeks um, before they leave. And those names will be those who are going uh, to Israel with Reverend Sig. And we want to definitely keep them in our prayers as they travel. As, and, and just, um, I've not been able to do it as of yet, um, but to walk the streets that Jesus walked to see places, and, and there's so much debate, well, you know, he sat here, he was buried here, no, he was buried over here, all that, I, I, to me, that doesn't matter, just, just to be a part of that atmosphere, uh, and I hope it's just a great spiritual moment for them, we'll keep them in our prayers for definite. Do you have a prayer concern that you would like to lift up? You got a name, uh, uh, just a name, you got a name that you want to lift up, yes? Shelly. Shelly? Will? Will? Will, Ron, and Francis, Sherry, Sherry. Pat, Pat. Linda. Linda, Baby Cecilia, Baby Cecilia. Martha. Martha, yeah, Martha's in um, uh, Encompass. Uh, she's removed from the hospital and, and now in Encompass and and uh, doing rehab right there. So we keep Martha in our prayers. Um, yes, did you have one back there in the? Oh, I saw you move. Okay, yeah, I'm like an auctioneer. I, I wait for people to move, and I'm sorry, I d- didn't. Terry. Terry? Paul. Paul? Lisa? Lisa? Um, for those who are brand new, oh yes, Marilyn. The situation in Ukraine. The situation in Ukraine. Yes, yes. Um, one of the things that we have here in the gathering is we have a replica kind of a replica of the Wailing Wall, okay? On to the right of that is an actual picture of the Wailing Wall, but we designed uh, this, and so it gives an opportunity for people to write their prayer concerns and stick them in the wall, okay? Uh, And after the worship service, you are more than welcome to do that, and I I would encourage that, uh, because people go by that wall all the time, and we lift up in our prayers. Let's go before the Lord. Almighty and gracious God, we come to you and just say thank you. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you.
for this day. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. Father, we come from all different walks of life. All different activities throughout our our days. But on this Sunday, and on every Sunday, we come in to do one thing, to worship you. Nothing else. Nothing else. Father, by your Spirit here with us, make this a worship experience. Fill us with your love. Fill us in your presence. Fill us with your knowledge. Fill us with your grace. Father, we know the power that you have. There's not a prayer concern that has been lifted up, and we just lifted the names of that person. But there's not a single one that you couldn't be able to just say the word and they would be healed. They would be fixed. Their situation would be different. So Father, your will be done, not ours. And in your will we pray that you will touch these folks that we have named. Father, there's prayer concerns right here, right now. We've not lifted our hands, but we lift up our hearts. Lord, we pray as you hear them, you will be blessing them. Father, this afternoon we have the choir coming together to sing in the cantata. Father, I just pray that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit. Fill them that they may sing your praises to you. That's what we want to do. We want to glorify you today and every day. Be in the center of our lives, oh God. We lift all these things up in your name, the precious name of Jesus. Amen and amen. And as Jesus taught us many years ago, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's so good to be with you. Let's sing about being in a place where there's God's wonderful people. Stand if you like. One, two, three, four. You know this thing out. I love Sing this chorus. I love the feel that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill.
I want to challenge you to sing it twice as loud. be seated if you'd like to but you can stand and keep praising God he doesn't care whether you're seated or whether you're standing as long as from your heart you're giving him praise this is one that is fairly new to us it's called lead me to the cross and may that be our prayer for everybody every day should catch on to this, okay, when you do. Savior, I come, quiet my soul, remember, redemption's here.
Did you like that one? This has so much during this time when we were looking forward to Easter. And we want to invite you to come out Friday night for Good Friday because we're going to be taking from the beginning where Christ is praying in Mount of Olives all the way through his crucifixion. It's a very moving service. So we look for you to be here. There's more information in your bulletin, I'm sure. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Okay. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. I believe in the sun. I believe in the risen one. I believe I overcome by the power of his blood. Amen. Amen. I'm alive. I'm alive because he lives. Today's scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Luke, beginning in verse 28 and going to verse 36. In honor of the Gospel, would you please rise as you are able? After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. As he approached Bethage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Say, the Lord needs it. Those who were sent ahead went and found it just as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, he, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And they replied, the Lord needs it. They brought it to Jesus, threw their cloaks on the colt, and put Jesus on it. As he went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. This is the word of God. 
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. And will you bow your heads with me? Almighty and gracious God, I pray that you will rescue me from me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be pleasing and glorifying to you, O God. I ask for this moment. Allow me to be an instrument of your grace. But when it comes to glory, Lord, you get it and I deserve nothing. In that regard, make me nothing. And you everything. In the name of your Son, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Morris Mandel in the Jewish press writes about a Chinese legend. A group of elderly cultured gentlemen met often to exchange wisdom and drink tea. Each host tried to find the finest and most costly varieties to create exotic blends that would arouse the admiration of the guests. When the most venerable and respected of the group entertained, he served the tea with unprecedented ceremony, measuring the leaves from a golden box. The assembled epicures praised this exquisite tea. The host smiled and said, The tea you have found so delightful is the same tea the peasants drink. I hope it will be a reminder that to all that the good things in life are not necessarily the rarest or that which costs the most. So at this time of Lent, as we get to this closing part of the, the Lenten season, is we've been talking about ordinary things. We talked about all kinds of stuff, and to this Sunday, we are going to discuss cloaks. Everybody talks about the palm branches. Okay? We do. It's Palm Sunday. Where are the palms? And, and we have palms laid around here. And at the end of the ceremony, if you'd like to take one home, please do so. Okay? But we talk about the palm branches. But what about the cloaks? We have them in different Arrangements here, all four of the Gospels account, Matthew 21, verses 1 through 9, report cloaks and branches that were cut from the trees around where they laid it on the road. Mark 11, verses 1 through 10, like Matthew, uses cloaks and branches, and the branches were cut um, from the fields nearby. John 12, 12 through 15 account has the palm branches, which we found out later on in my ministry or as I was starting ministry, when you're reading and researching that, the palm branches were not indigenous to that area. So where would they come from? I think of weird stuff like that. Where would they come from? But I wasn't there back then. I wasn't sure exactly what is, is there, but they put stuff on the roads for Jesus to ride on top of. So we know the story. He sends two of his disciples out and says there is a colt, which is a foal of a donkey is what it is. He says, bring, untie that one and bring it here to me. And can you imagine what the disciples were thinking? Um, okay. Wouldn't it be like going into your house and, and all of a sudden you see something completely strange in your kitchen? And, Sir, what are you doing? Or ma'am, what are you doing? And I'm going, I'm just getting some Tupperware. <laughs> what, what, what are you doing? You know? And he said, if anybody asks why you're untying the colt, just say that the Lord needs it. Okay. And sure enough, in our passage is here is this account that's taking place. Why are you untying the colt? The Lord needs it. Can you imagine what their surprise was when they went, okay. Not a single person here would do that. The Lord needs it. Well, he can come and get it. 
And I'm not trying to be disrespectful or anything, but you know how, this is how we think. In stuff that we have, and, and animals such as that, that was basically their money. You know, the sheep and the lambs and, the, and you know, all, the go- and all that stuff was currency in their understanding. And here is this cult. And the Scripture makes it a point to say that it's unridden. And so they bring it. And then they threw their cloaks. The, the, the Greek uses garments. When it translates, it uses garments on the colt for Jesus to ride. Okay? This is shock number two. The colt had never been ridden. We have all... Do I have a witness in the house? We have seen enough westerns and what happens to a person that gets on an unwritten horse. It's not something that would give them a great, just calm feeling of, you know. And we don't have evidence that Jesus ever rode. And even though the animal is more docile than an unridden horse, wouldn't there be a problem with the ride? Now, we understand that for a donkey, if, and, and, and I, I saw this, I saw a clip of Yellowstone. I don't know, how many people have know what Yellowstone is, you know, and, and, and watch it? Okay, yeah, yeah. And, and I, 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 this one, and I don't know the names of the characters, okay, but this young lady was going to ride this horse. And the guy was telling her, said, a horse has the nerve endings on their back to the point where they can feel a fly land on their back. And said, they know that your nerves are there. So not only does that horse want to trust you, but you've got to trust the horse. And so she gets on the horse and she's holding on to the bridle and, and the reins and, and going around. And then he says, let go. Because there's... There's that, that nervousness, nervousness is just penetrating. And the thing is, is if we place our faith in what has already happened in the life of Jesus and his disciples, then we know that since Jesus can calm the storm, really the cult is not a problem. You ever figure that? You know, we don't think about that, but a, a, a cult is not going to be a problem if Jesus can calm the storm. And so here he's on this cult. And Jesus is making a statement with the proceedings. Zechariah 9.9 says this, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The donkey was born for Jesus' wonderful work. He had not been, written, been used or ridden by anyone else. The donkey had a purpose. And it was waiting for Jesus to climb on to ride. Pretty cool, isn't it? The cult had royal associations. In the ancient world, the victors that came in and was claiming their kingship, they didn't come in on a stallion. They didn't come on a white horse. They came on a donkey. Because what they're saying is that we bring peace. What was Jesus saying? He was bringing peace. Just not yet, but he was bringing it. And if you know anything about a donkey, they're the only animal that has a cross on their back. Jesus rode in to Jerusalem with a cross. And he saved us by the same manner. But see, wait a minute. We're not talking about donkeys. We're talking about cloaks. Do you realize when you research cloaks about biblical cloaks, things that they would wear, you really don't get a whole lot of information? We, we, We don't. We don't get a whole lot of information. Why? Because they are just naturally ordinary things. Everybody had them. And they didn't just put it on the colt, but they also put it on the ground in front of Jesus as a means of praise and paying homage as the entering king. And that alone, you know, you put something in front of an animal going to walk across it, okay? 
because I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, and, and like many people do, we think of today's times. And I, I watched enough of those equestrian things. They have got to be encouraged to go over those bars. And I've seen too many as they run to it and get to that point and stop and the rider is going over the old bar by themselves. Okay? And so here they're laying these cloaks and branches and palm branches in front of this donkey. We also know that there's people celebrating and cheering and shouting and in front of Jesus, around Jesus. Now, we also know the Pharisees. They didn't like this. They didn't like this at all. Old Testament account in connection with a king, 2 Kings 9.13, they quickly took their cloaks and spread them under him on the bare steps, and then they blew the trumpet and shouted, Hey, you, yeah, you is king. Yeah, you is king. The Pharisees would not, they didn't like any of this proceedings that was going on and happening. Because people were shouting, Hosanna, King, you know, and, and all these different things going on. And the Pharisees going, wait a minute, guys, shut up. Be quiet. I think it'd be somewhat of equivalent of standing in a building full of people and yelling fire. What are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to have the firemen be here and, and then we're going to get charged in it because they're thinking all the way through the scenario, aren't they? And what the Pharisees were sitting there going, wait a minute, if Rome gets a hold of this, they're going to send their people to us and they're going to mess up everybody. Jesus, tell them to be quiet. And I love the line. Oh, if they were quiet, the rocks couldn't hold back. But what is a cloak? If you look at the biblical wardrobe, a cloak is an outer garment without sleeves. We would probably call them shawls. An outer garment without sleeves. Now, William J. Morford wrote this book called The Power of the New Testament, Revealing Jewish Roots. Okay? And Pastor Andy Purcell, who was my pastor when I was a child, he told me when I first started ministry, get this book. It will change the way you see Scripture. Because it was written from a Jewish Christian standpoint. And they knew the, they knew the Jewish history and they knew the things that were about. And then I looked at the Greek in this. And the Greek word that is used for cloak is amatia. Amatia means cloak or outer garment. And the cloak of a Jewish man was his prayer shawl. His talit. It was his prayer shawl. Well, the, the, the time out, Pastor Steve. We're thinking it's just some overcoat, something like this, aren't we? Aren't we? Come on now. Aren't we? We're just thinking it's some kind of a cloak that we, we're laying down, putting on there, but just, and we, I, I don't know for certain because I was not there, but what if that outer garment, which as they are celebrating Passover, would have been the toilet? When Jesus was walking, you remember when Jesus was walking and the person who was bleeding went and touched the fringe? Jesus was wearing a prayer shawl. So what if we put this scenario back with that understanding? That they laid on this donkey their prayer shawl. And Jesus climbed on board. They laid at the feet that the donkey was walking on their prayer shawls. You know the purpose of the prayer shawl? That everyone and the wearer to look at the corner fringes and remember all the commandments of the Lord. 613 commandments, including the promises of God. So in Jesus' day, people would see all the power of God in that fringe. 
Matthew 9, 20, just then a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak, touched his fringe, touched that. And the Greek uses fringe, what, which would mean that Jesus was wearing a talet when the bleeding woman was healed. Now, there's also another account. Remember when Jesus went to save the daughter who had died? They knew the power of that shawl. Dr. Morford thinks that he would have taken that prayer shawl off and laid it over her. Because you remember what he says, Talitha Makom? That Talitha is a portion of this word. All right? Sig would know this better because he speaks this stuff. Okay? But isn't that interesting? Now, if the people saw this piece of clothing as the power of God, it reminded them of God's commandments and promises, and it was extremely important to them, then what statement were they making when they laid them on the ground in front of Jesus, who was riding a donkey? Gives the ordinary a little bit different meaning, doesn't it? See, it's always an adventure at this time of the year when you speak. Many would think it would be easy to become to know the stories and to be able to preach and, and share them. I'm going to tell you, actually, there are many pastors uh, think is, how can I present this same story a different way to show people that there's, there's meaning behind it? You understand that? I, I worked with a church one time that we had these nice little advertising signs that said, we worship at uh, the Gillespie United Methodist Church. And I said, okay, for the month of May, put this out close to the road so people can see that, and maybe that would encourage them to come to the church and be there. I said, when the 1st of June came, I said, take them down. Put them in your garage. 1st of August, put them back out in the yard, but put them in a different place. And they went, why? Aren't we going to advertise the whole time? I said, because after about the third week, people don't see the sign anymore. And after several years of our life, how do we see Palm Sunday? How do we see Monday, Thursday? How do we see Good Friday and Easter when it comes around? Because we get hooked up into the traditions, don't we? Now, we don't have a sunrise service here, all right? But I've been to those churches that had that sunrise service, 6 a.m., waking up all your children okay, and you want to praise God, but it feels more like you're wrestling the Satan's children, <laughs> and I'm seriously not trying to look at anybody because some people are sitting there looking at each other going, yeah, you know, you know, you know. <laughs> but one pastor focused on the tying and the untying of the colt, making reference to the fact that there were many things that we need to untie from ourselves in our relationship with Jesus and things that we need to tie up. My question is this, do we have anything in our lives that feel as being sacred, meaningful, and worth so much that we would not be willing to lay them down so Jesus, who's riding a donkey, could walk over it? Do we have anything in our lives so precious, sacred, we think the world of, that we would not lay down in front of Jesus? Do you know what those items are called that are worth more worship than what God is to us? They call that an idol. Do we have Jesus Lord over all aspects of our lives, every part, or just different pieces? In the work called The Wounded Healer, Henry Nouwen retell, uh, retells a tale from an ancient India. It said, four royal brothers decided each to master a special ability Time went by and the brothers met to reveal what they had learned. 
I have mastered a science, said the first, by which I can take but a bone of some creature and create the flesh that goes with it. I, said the second, know how to grow that creature's skin and hair if there is flesh on its bones. The third said, I am able to create its limbs if I have flesh, the skin, and the hair. And I, concluded the fourth, know how to give life to that creature if its in form is complete. Thereupon the brothers went into the jungle to find a bone so they could demonstrate their specialties, specialities. As fate would have it, the bone they found was that of a lion. One added flesh to the bone, the second grew hide and hair, the third completed it with matching limbs, and the fourth gave the lion life. Shaking its mane, the ferocious beast rose and jumped on his creators. He killed them all and vanished quickly and contently into the jungle. We too have the capacity to create what can devour us. Goals and dreams can consume us. Possessions and property can turn and destroy us unless we first seek God's kingdom and righteousness and allow him to breathe into what we make of life. Jesus enters the city. Jesus enters the city. How do we pay our homage for this week? How do we pay our homage for this day? Praise be to God. Because we can say this today. We will know it better by Sunday. He is king. Will you bow your heads with me? Almighty and gracious God, we just thank you so much. Oh, we can't praise you enough. How'd you do it? You knew what was going on. How'd you do it? Sitting on that donkey, how'd you do it? Those people shouting those praises, how'd you do it? Because at the end of the week, you took everyone's sin and carried it for us. be honest with you, Lord, we'd have chickened out. We'd have said, we ain't going to do this. But then we're not you. Oh, Heavenly Father, praise be to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Would you please stand for our closing song? One, two, one, two, three, four. Remember us. Show us the way.
Father, we welcome you. Thank you. Thank you so much for worshiping with us today. Thank you. If you've got any questions about the church that you'd like to share with me or something, uh, you can contact me throughout the week or contact me right after worship service uh, today. We're glad that you are here. Um, just want to, again, this afternoon at 3 o'clock is the choir cantata. Thursday is Monday, Thursday. We'll have communion uh, and, and Sig will be leading that worship service uh, in the main sanctuary. On Friday, Good Friday, we're going to be right here, okay? Uh, that wall will probably not be there. You are more than welcome. They're all at 5 o'clock for this week, the, the Thursday and Friday, and so we invite you to be a part of that. Uh, it will be a great time of worship, and we would love to have you with us. Now receive this benediction. You are a blessing. You are worth so much that our Christ died for you. Don't take that lightly. So go in his grace. Go in his peace. Go in the love that he has for you and shine, shine, shine. Because this world needs to see Christ. So go in his grace. Amen.